everyone, welcome to our first topic. It's all about the foundations of economics. We'll be going through some, but not all of the content for this section. Make sure that you take useful notes because you'll need to refer back to them in class when we do our exercises. Getting it started. Economics is largely about choices. Every choice or decision we make involves trade-offs. There are alternatives that we can no longer do when we make that choice. For example, when you choose to study at home, you may be giving up extra sleep or some time gaming. In this section, we're, we're going to refer to opportunity cost. And this is the best alternative you give up when making a choice. So the cost you have for an extra hour of study, it may be an hour of sleep if that's your best alternative use of your time. Now, we say that every choice has a cost because things are scarce. We cannot have everything. We need to make decisions. Economists love to work with models. So we're going to look at our first economic model now, and that is the production possibilities curve. This can show trade-offs, opportunity costs, and two important concepts, scarcity and efficiency. Now, in this model, we assume, and economists, they love making assumptions, we assume that an economy can only make two goods. So in this case, cups and iPhones. Uh, as you can see, this is a very, very simplified view of an economy. Only two things that they're making. Uh, we have data here for how many we can possibly produce at each combination, A to A. I want you to graph this with cots on the y-axis and iPhones on the x-axis. Um, if you do it roughly to scale, that will be fine. It needs to be nice and big, so maybe like a third of a page. So pause now and have a go at that. All right, it'll be done. Uh, here's mine. Uh, you can see it is is roughly the scale, and that's that's fine. It's it doesn't matter too much. We can still see these ideas here. So how does it show all these things? We're going to see uh, the trade-off of producing cuts is that you give up producing iPhones, as it's the only alternative. Is therefore the opportunity cost, the best alternative. So if we are at point B, the opportunity cost of moving to F is six cuts. If we want to make those two extra iPhones, to give up making six cuts. Okay. Uh, well, uh, these points <laughs> represent our uh, action possibilities what is possible, anything beyond that must be impossible. So it's impossible, unattainable if it's outside the curve. Operating at a point inside the curve is not producing as much as possible. For this represents inefficiency uh, and resources not being employed to their full potential. Therefore, production on the curve represents efficiency. Okay, now we have a special type of people. Production possibilities curve. The two goods here are omelets and quiches, which both really use the same resources. This gives us constant opportunity cost as resources can be adapted easily. One extra quiche will always cost two omelets, and one extra omelet will always cost half a quiche. Plotting this out would give us a straight line production possibilities curve, which is uncommon. You don't have to plot this out, but if you want to check and plot it out, you'll see that it is a straight line. Okay. Uh, Back to a more common example, omelets and toy cars. These goods share very few resources, right? Obviously. So as we move from A to B, we only forego one omelet. We aren't using many of the good omelet making resources. Moving from B e to E, we give up an omelet. And now we're using our best omelet making resources to make the toy cars. Opportunity cost increases as we make more of either good. This gives us our out or concave production possibilities curve. So it's this is what we consider normal. It's it's like the one you drew first up. Oh, I want you to take a look at these two sets of goods. Now I think my my face might be in the way of here. It says head from play school, you know, like a soft toy. Um, I want you to take a look at these two sets of goods. Which one would have straight line production possibilities? 
okay? Uh, I'm sure you all said peaches and apricots because their resources are so similar. Soil, climate, farmer, they can be the same. Uh, so similar, in fact, that my grandfather grew both on his commercial farm in the Barossa Valley. Um, we trained and plush toys obviously use somewhat different resources and therefore have increasing opportunity costs. So we say opportunity costs stays the same, here it increases uh, largely. Okay, uh, we mentioned efficiency briefly earlier, but we're going to get a bit more specific. We've got two types, productive efficiency is when goods are being produced in the least costly way, using the fewest possible resources, and also as much as possible being produced. Qualitative efficiency and production is what is most desired by society, both in terms of what and also how much. Okay. So I want you to consider whether combination A on this production possibilities curve is efficient. Okay. Uh, combination A is definitely productively efficient. As we can see, it occurs on the production possibilities curve. However, it's highly unlikely that society would prefer more denim underwear than jeans. You know, unless I'm just old and I'm not with it anymore. Now, why is this production possibilities curve represented as a straight line? I want you to answer that. Uh, uh, economies are not static, they change. And that's what makes studying economics so much fun. This means we need to look at how changes in the world can change the production possibilities. Curves. Three things will shift a production possibilities curve. Change in resource quantity, change in resource quality, or a change in technology. Uh, we're going to look at a couple of examples. So let's go back to two cars and onwards. Right. Um, what happens if there is an increase in population? Right. Uh, we can make more cars and omelets than previously because we have a greater quantity of resources. So the whole curve is going to shift outwards. We can make more of both. Uh, let's get something different. What if there is a technological improvement in egg beating? So some sort of electrifying egg beating machine like this. It helps us make more omelets. Uh, won't help us with the cars at all. So the production possibilities curve will only increase on the omelet axis. Right? Now, this confuses some people at first because they look, say, here and they go, well, we can make the same, we can make more toy cars than we could before at this, at this combination. But what we need to consider is that on the y axis, this is where all possible resources are devoted to toy cars, we can't make any more than before. Whereas on the X axis, when all resources are devoted to omelets, we can make this more than before. Okay? Uh, we're going through lots of these in class, so you don't have to 100% get it now. That's, that's fine. Okay, lastly, we're going to do a quick introduction to the economic problem, just so that we have a little bit of familiarity with it before class. Oh, the fundamental problem of economics, this is why the study of economics exists, is that our wants are unlimited, our resources to fulfill those wants are limited. So it means that we have many choices to make about how we use our resources. That's, that's the study of economics, about these choices, how we allocate scarce resources. Now, we can be more precise when referring to resources. They fall into four different types. So land, all natural resources available for production of goods and services. Labor, you know that means the physical and mental effort of people. Capital might be a new use of this word for lots of people. It refers to the man-made factors that are put towards the production of goods and services. And then entrepreneurship. This is the skill of taking risks and um, combining the other factors of production in innovative ways. So, Management is, is the way to put it. Uh, the scarcity of each of these resources means that there are choices which must be made by any society or economy. Uh, these choices are 
what do we make? We can't make everything, but we have to make some choices. What do we make? How should we make them? We don't have unlimited resources, so we want to use our resources in the best way. So how do we put the resources together to produce our goods and services? And who gets them? For whom should the goods and services be produced? This is a lot of what a lot of political debate is about. Who, how do we distribute the goods and services that we can produce as a society? Uh, very tricky. We are going to, through these concepts in class, we're going to be um, you know, doing exercises to deepen our understanding of it. So if you don't get it all now, that's completely fine. But I want you to have thought about it and taken the notes that you think most useful. Okay. I'll see you in class.